Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here. Uh, and so, all right, so here's what I want to do. I am going to make a mini series kind of thing about uh, the seventh generation of game consoles, which just ended, as all of you know, I'm sure. Um, this video is just going to be about, like, generally the seventh generation. I'm not going to talk too much about each console. And then I'll do separate videos on each one of them. So you're looking at a total of four videos here. So uh, hopefully you stay tuned and you enjoy them. Um, but uh, let's kick it off by just talking about, you know, in general, what we gained from the seventh generation, what we lost in the seventh generation, and, you know, interesting little trivia about it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so first off, we acknowledge that the seventh generation, it's debatable when it started. Um, you'll see what I'm saying. The first one that came out was the Xbox 360. It came out in 2005. And then a year later, in 2006, the PS3 came out, and two days later, actually, the Wii came out. They launched on the same weekend. Um, now, you could declare that the, sixth gener or the seventh generation started in 2005, or you could say 2006. And the reason you can do that is if you look now to the current generation, the eighth generation, do you say it started in 2013? Or do you say that it started in 2012 when the Wii U came out? Uh, the way I would define it, um, I don't think the next generation completely begins until everybody's out the door. In other words, until all three of them, in this case, are released. So I would say that the seventh generation didn't officially start until 2006. And the sixth generation, you know, the Dreamcast, the PS2, the GameCube, and the uh, Xbox did not end until 2006. But, you know, again, it's semantics, it's whatever. Obviously, the 360 did exist for a year, much like the Wii U has existed for a year. So look at it however you want. Um, so, but either way, uh, what's interesting about that is that, you know, if, depending on when you calculate, if you start in 2006 and end in 2012, or if you start in, 2000, no, start in 2005 and end in 2012, or start in 2006 and end in 2013. Either way, you're looking at, I believe, the longest console generation ever. Um, there's obviously been other consoles specifically, like individually, that lasted longer. The PS2 did, the Atari 2600 did, I think the Genesis did. You know, some of them just last like forever. But um, a generation as a whole, where like all of them are competing, that's pretty rare. Um, and in this case, I think it was largely because of the economic crash in 2008. Um, had this been a normal console cycle, we probably would have seen new consoles in like 2010, maybe 2011, as late as 2011. Probably 2010 is my guess. Uh, but because that happened, you know, it, was, it would have been ridiculous for them to say like, okay, we know you're all really hurting right now, but um, hey, you want to buy a new console? Wasn't going to work. You had to make these, you had to make them last. And uh, I think that's also why we got three revisions of every single one of them. I mentioned this in a different video. Three major body revisions of a console is extraordinarily rare. Uh, the last one that did it was the Genesis, as far as I know. Um, people pointed out, like, no, 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 the PS2 had, like, you know, uh, that PSX thing in Japan. That didn't get a global release. That does not count. That is not a mainstream release. By that logic, I could argue that the Panasonic GameCube was the Model 2 GameCube. Now granted, of all three of these, the Wii had the smallest design. You know, the, this is the launch model, and it had GameCube support, so you have GameCube controller ports and, um, and memory card slots on it. Um, but they removed those, and they changed the placement of the logo, I think, and they just made slight little tweaks. Um, that was the least significant body change of all, all three of them. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that they had to do that just because it lasted so long. And in all cases, well, in these two cases, it was largely because they had problems. Their launch models, you know, the 360, we all know, had the Red Rings problem. The, um, the PS3 was just too goddamn expensive. You know, like it was $600 and it cost them 900 to make. You know, it was ridiculous to think they could make a profit on that. They were hoping to sell games, obviously. But again, I'll talk about that in its own video. Um, this generation, we lost certain things. Uh, I'm not saying that's bad. You know, most of the things we lost were not necessarily stuff that needed to stay. Uh, for example, this is the last console to use memory card slots. 
Uh, you could argue the Wii, because it, it did come out a year later, but its, it's memory card ports are just for the GameCube. Like, the Wii can't save anything to those itself. Um, and the 360 can. Uh, but obviously, when they redesigned the Slim model, they got rid of that, because it was pointless. So you're looking at the last console to ever use memory cards. Uh, who introduced memory cards? I think it was... Well, technically, the Sega CD had them. But anyway, so whatever. Memory cards are done. Uh, we got HDMI for the first time. The PS3 was the first one to use that. People often forget the launch 360s did not have HDMI. Uh, in fact, I can prove this. Um, on the back here, you have this, just an AV port, like a big AV port, and there's no HDMI on there. And so what companies would do, this is a, an HDMI adapter by Mad Cats. I regret the crap out of buying this. Uh, it just goes right in there, and on the back side you have a digital audio out, and you have an HDMI out. And basically it, what it does is it just kind of reconfigures your component signal. It, it, you can't get 1080p out of it. it. It was a stupid purchase, and I should never have done it. Um, so, that's that. <laughs> uh, but the PS3 had it natively, and then a year later, in 2006, when they launched the Xbox 360 Elite, that had HDMI on it. The Wii never had HDMI. This generation introduced us to high definition. The Dreamcast, the GameCube, the PS2, and the Xbox all did 480p pretty much across the board. The PS2, interestingly, had like the biggest problem with that. I find that now, even most games on the PS2 do not support anything other than 480i. Most of them, a lot of them will support 480p, but not the majority. Uh, whereas like every Dreamcast game is capable of 480p with only a handful of exceptions. Like every GameCube game is capable of it, like every Xbox game is capable of it, but not the PS2 for some reason. Although interestingly, at their hardware level, the PS2 and the Xbox are capable of, I believe they both can do 1080i. I know that the Xbox says right on its dashboard it can, although I don't think any game used it. Uh, it's also capable of 720p, but I don't. there might have been some that used that. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but in the PS2's case, there are, I know, I think it's Gran Turismo 4, I think, um, is capable of displaying in 1080i, which I would love to see. I've never actually seen it personally, but that would be kind of interesting uh, through component cables, obviously. So whatever. But my point being that uh, HD was not even remotely common in the sixth generation, but in this generation, they really just blew it up and they let people know. And I remember thinking, like, who gives a shit? You know, what HD? I'll stick with composite. I was wrong. That's fucking stupid. Once I actually saw it in person, I was like, shit! <laughs> like, HD is the way to go. Holy crap. Um, and with that came new technologies. You know, the uh, PS3 was the first console to use Blu-ray, which, believe it or not, I mean, this is not super relevant, but Blu-ray movies, can you believe it? They've been out since 2006. It's still not the standard, which is strange to me. Uh, I don't know if it ever will be, but, you know, whatever. Um... 360 obviously never did that. They went the HD DVD route um, briefly. Uh, we lost the concept of the wireless controller. Or the wired controller. I'm sorry, obviously we didn't lose the wireless controller. The wired controller. You know, you look back at your N64, your Genesis, whatever. The controller is obviously built right in, you know, the, the cable's built right into the controller and then goes right into the console. Um, the Xbox 360 has a dedicated wired controller if you ever want that for some reason. Um, a lot of people would say, like, why? And for the most part, you'd be completely right. There's no real reason to go with a wired controller uh, on the Xbox 360. Originally, uh, this was my understanding, because I don't play PC games, but I know for a while there, apparently, it was way easier to get a wired controller to function on your PC if you wanted to play your PC games with a 360 controller. Uh, they obviously got around that now with like little adapter things. And the only benefit I ever saw, the only reason I ever got one, uh, was if you used the uh, wired controller, you could, along with some other things, uh, you could actually force the, the uh, Xbox 360 to use controllers from other consoles, uh, depending on the console. I did a video on this a long, like years ago, like three or four years ago. Uh, I got a Dreamcast controller running on the 360, uh, Xbox controller, original Xbox controller, a uh, PS2 controller, you know, it's like through little adapters and some daisy chaining stuff, but it required uh, a wired controller. But, you know, the new generation doesn't have that, and they've completely phased it out. Obviously, you could argue, yes, if you, you know, connect a USB cable from your PS3 to your controller, then it's wired, but it also can be detached. Again, I'm not saying that losing that 
concept is bad. I'm just saying, hey, let's observe it. Let's give it a funeral, like the memory card. It's it's done. It's bye bye. Um, what else did we gain? <laughs> we gained. I, I use quotations around that because I didn't like it. Uh, motion controls. Uh, we introduced that to us uh, with the Wii Sports type of gimmicky shit that I really hate. Uh, the Xbox 360 obviously gave us the Kinect, which I hate even more. Uh, actually, no, I don't hate the Kinect more. Uh, the reason I don't hate the Kinect more is because you can not use the Kinect. But the Wii is crippled completely by its controller, which I'll, I'll talk about in its own video. The PS3, I actually think, did this the best when it came to the concept of motion controls. What they did was they said, look, we'll give you the iToy thing. It's like the Kinect, but not as good, if you can even imagine that. And we'll give you the... Uh, what is it, the PS, the PlayStation Plus thing? No, not PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Move. PlayStation Plus. The PlayStation Move, which is their, you know, Wii mode thing with like a colorful ball on it. And some games will use it. The reason I like that the best is because they just kind of put it out there so that people who were bitching about how I would like to have a camera, I would like to have motion controls, could have it, but the vast majority of their games are not interrupted by it. But to be fair, the vast majority of 360 games are not interrupted by it. They are enhanced by it, or they specifically dedicate that uh, the game is only supposed to be used by it, which is fine. I'm totally okay with that. If you want to do it as a separate thing, that's totally cool. Though the Wii, for the most part, is virtually inoperable because of its horrible controller scheme, but uh, I'm, I'm really glad that at least some games, they decided, okay, we've got these GameCube controller ports, let's let people use a GameCube controller. Which is why the Model 2 and the Wii Mini especially really suck, because they took those out, so you're left with no choice. Unless you use a classic controller, I guess. But anyway, I hate motion controlling, so I wish they didn't introduce that in this generation, and I hope it goes away forever soon. And it's already starting to. The Kinect is kind of like the last bastion of it, really. I mean, we kind of have the six-axis type of thing where you, you know, shake a little bit, but for the most part, it's going away. And I'm glad. Um, this generation, as far as games go, was awesome. You know, like, <laughs> there was a lot of great stuff. Um, the 360 was my console of choice, and that's where, pretty much where I played most of my seventh generation titles. And there's so many awesome games on there. Especially right around 2008. Like, that might have been the best year of it. Uh, you know, you got games like Bioshock coming out, and you got you just got a lot of solid campaign single-player experience games, which is the kind of gaming I like. I'm, I'm not really into multiplayer, which I'll talk about in a bit here. But, yeah, like, you just got so many solid f experiences there. And shortly after that, there was a, a change in the seventh generation. You know, that first few years was really solid, man. You know, the 360 was game-centric. The PS3, it didn't start out that way, but it eventually got better. The Wii was fun. Everybody had the little honeymoon with the Wii for a little bit there until it kind of wore off. But some of those games in the early couple of years, man, they were, they were phenomenal. And once the online thing really hit, which is kind of another thing we gained, like previous gen, the sixth generation, hell, I think the fifth generation, if you include the Saturn, you could go back to the fourth generation with like those links, what were they called? Those things that the, you can connect to the Genesis, you can connect to the SNES, X-Link, something like that. God, X-Band, that's it, X-Band. You could connect those and play online, but none of that shit was standard. Even going up into the sixth generation with Xbox Live and its early versions wasn't, just the majority of people weren't doing it. It wasn't until this generation that the online thing, playing the concept of playing live with people was really just took off. And uh, you can... Most people will argue that that's a good thing. And I would never say it was a bad thing. I would never say, like, that fucking ruined gaming. I would, not, I would not do that. But the negative effect of it is that is twofold, in my opinion. Um, first, you're going to have... Right around 2008, when everybody started buying a lot of online-centric games, you started seeing a shift away from the single-player type of campaign games. Which bothers me, because that's the kind of gaming I like. I don't really enjoy online gaming. It's just not my thing. You know, it's, if you love it, then by all means, love it. I'm not knocking you in any way. But it's just never been... I've just never wanted to do that. You know, like, I just want to play the single-player story kind of campaign. That's just... That's who I am. That's what I enjoy. That's actually the reason Call of Duty 2 is my favorite Call of Duty of all time. I couldn't give two fucks about playing it online. I just think the campaign is awesome. Um, 
But anyway, so that's a problem for gamers like me. And the other problem is you end up with a lot of coasters, uh, or you will, because you're, these servers, the ones that keep these things operational, are going down. You know, the Wii's already starting to shut down. The Xbox 360 will, I, I, you know, I don't know the future, but I'm guessing based on history here, this thing's servers will probably go down in 2015, is my guess, and the PS3 servers probably 2016, maybe even 2017. They're, Sony's a little bit better about uh, keeping their services going. But I could be wrong, I mean, Microsoft only, only had one console before this one, but they did drop it like a dirty shirt, which is really, really lame. So hopefully they treat the 360 with a little bit more respect, but either way, even if they both last until 2020, which I can't see happening, I can't see either of them lasting past 2017, all those games that are completely multiplayer-centric will be fucking worthless, because you can't use them anymore. And if they had, like, mediocre, you know, like, single-player campaigns, didn't, I mean, I didn't play all of them, but didn't, like, this, the later Call of Duties have, like, four-hour single-player campaigns that could be just accomplished in that brief amount of time? That's not what I would call replay value. You know, I value games that aren't dependent on other services, other than what the console naturally has at all times, uh, which is why I love things like Bioshock, because I can play, if, if assuming all my 360s are working, in 20 years, 30 years, Bioshock will still be Bioshock. You know, I can still play it that way. But if I had really just absolutely loved Modern Warfare 2, and I loved playing it online, and even like a couple of years, I'm going to try to get up. Oh, it doesn't work. It's kind of like the Halo 2, right? Halo 2, a lot of people really liked the game, but I think a lot of people really liked it for its online stuff, right? And you can't do that anymore. Doesn't that make the game a little less valuable now? Like, not, I don't mean it's financially, I mean just like as far as interest. You're not that interested in that game anymore. Uh, maybe it had a single, great single player campaign. I don't remember really enjoying its campaign, but that's just me. So be aware of that. And with that in mind, if you are. You know, if you don't have a PS3 or 360 or a Wii and you want one, I wouldn't wait a whole lot longer. Um, they're pretty much as cheap as they're going to get. Well, I, actually, I would say next um, next holiday season. 2014, Black Friday, that time. If you don't have one of these and you even kind of want one, that's when you got to do it. Uh, because, like I said, those servers are coming down. And even if you're like, well, I don't care, I don't play online, or I won't intend to, I just want to play the games, like you, I like the single player stuff. You're going to want to get patches. You're going to want to download any kind of free DLC you can get your hands on. You're going to want to get all like the bug fix patches that you can get your hands on uh, while the servers are still operational. Otherwise, you're going to be playing kind of out of the box, lesser content, uh, which nobody really talks about that. The fact that the, those servers are going down, and that's a fact, they, they, there's no possibility that those stay up for the rest of human society, like existence, Let's just get that out of your head if you are thinking that, they will go down in a few years. And so that means that any game that has extra content or has patches, etc., to make the game better, even if the stuff is you know free or if it costs anything, eventually that content will be locked to you. You will not be able to get it forever. Unless, ironically, you probably have, like, a modded console. Uh, are you following me here? I hope you are. Like, the original Xbox had DLC. It had a bunch of it. A lot of its games did. Um, and like most people, I didn't get it. You know, like, I didn't have Xbox Live back then. I, I, I didn't, you know, I don't know. I just didn't do it. But now, all that DLC is gone. Forever. You know, it doesn't exist on their servers. Their servers are gone. They shut them down, like, what, in... 09, something like that. Uh, maybe it was 08 even. And so you can't get those things back unless you have a modded Xbox. A lot of people have put the files up on the internet and then you can put them onto your console. But to do it legitimately is only possible for another couple of years. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's another thing this generation did that sucks, actually. They did two things that really sucked. One was they, the concept of patches and the concept of DLC. Now, both things were not... Well, okay, patches might have been introduced in this generation. I'm not sure about that. DLC wasn't. But both things have this in common. They started off as really good, noble ideas that got horribly corrupted. You know, I remember the original Xbox, Star Wars Battlefront II, one of my favorite games of all time. 
I, I couldn't get enough of that game. I played it all the time. I absolutely loved it. And it, when I found out there was DLC for it, it killed me because I was like, oh my god. I would love to get those extra you know, levels. And I would love to get the extra characters. But I can't. You know, I don't have Xbox Live. That's what it is. And I thought that idea was so awesome. I was like, you have this game that's completely done, and then they add more stuff to it to make your experience better. And as I think we all know now, they kind of got away from that and started saying, like, look, DLC now is stuff that's it's no longer downloadable content. It's disc-locked content, for the most part. Uh, it's stuff that's already on your disc that you have to buy to have the right to use. Not Obviously, there are plenty of exceptions to that, but people have gone, they've gone, they've gone fucking DLC crazy. You know, like... They make, they, they make the game with DLC in mind. You know, like, not only do they make the game, but they simultaneously construct DLC that's eventually going to be put into it. That way, you know, you know you're going to have to keep paying the money. Like I said, good idea that got horribly corrupted. And it's the same with patches, man. You know, patches... <laughs> there was a time where your game, if you were going to ship it, it had to be done. You know, like, it had to be finished. You couldn't be like... Well, you know, we really want to make our release date, and the game's, like, not even half done. There's tons of bugs. It's whatever. Uh, you couldn't just be like, okay, sure, I'm going to put it out there. You'd have to fucking make the game. You'd have to finish it, because there was no such thing as patching a game. But I won't deny, of course, that there's certain games that could have been, that really could have benefited from it. And I, I think my favorite example is Enter the Matrix uh, for the original Xbox, GameCube, PS2. The Xbox version in particular is really buggy. And the reason that is, is because they come out at the same time as, like, Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions, whatever. And so they just didn't have time to finish it. A patch in that case would have been a really good thing, because you could have fixed the game for all these people that you were forced to get out by a certain date due to, like, movie restrictions. But for the most part, that's not how it works. For the most part, what happens is, like I said before, they just go, well, our game's not quite finished, fuck it, we want it out in time for Christmas, get it out there, and we'll patch it later. Those patches are expensive, though. They don't always bother, you know. And, like I said, if you get the game and the console after the servers are down, you're left with the buggy one. Forever. If your hard drive dies in your console years from now, and the system's fine, and you try to, like, all right, I'll put a new hard drive in it. It'll be all good again. All the DLC and patches are gone. You know, you, all the updates are gone. And you're left with the default of everything. And that sucks. There's, there was no future-proofing in this generation, and I, I think that that's only going to get worse. And we already know it is with things like microtransactions, so... It sucks that this generation took two really good ideas and just completely fucking raped them. But, uh, you know, whatever. That being said, actually, game-wise, I mean, this was... this I would say it was probably my third favorite generation of all time. You know, uh, I would say the Genesis SNES 16-bit, fourth generation, I think it was the fourth generation, was my favorite. That was the best, because it wasn't about what your console can do. It wasn't about who had the most money. It was about two dedicated game companies, Sega and Nintendo, trying to win you over by making the best game experience possible for you. Because that's all the consoles could do. They could just play games. So the games had to kick ass. And I, I, I'm not saying I don't want my consoles to be able to do other things, nothing like that. I'm simply saying that if that's the mantra of your studio, like, we have to win by making the best shit, you're going to have really good games. Whereas if, you're, if you can fall back on the fact that, like, yeah, well, our console has Netflix. Well, ours has HBO Go. You know, like, whatever. You stop being so game-centric, especially when you're a computer company and an electronics company, or if you're a company that's completely lost its fucking mind. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of that. Um, yeah, I, think, I think that's all I have to say on the generation as a whole. I, I still really like it. Uh, in case anybody's curious, the other generation I would say is better was, might be the sixth generation, Dreamcast, PS2, Xbox, GameCube. Um, that might be partially a bias just because I fucking love the Dreamcast. I, I'd really have to kind of look at them under a microscope and really scrutinize. But I, I think I would edge it out to the sixth generation over the seventh generation. That all being said, it's at least my third favorite, which is still really, really good. I prefer it over the fifth generation, you know, the PS1, Saturn, uh, N64. Just an opinion. You're entitled to your own, whatever you think. Um, so, yeah, 
that's that really is it. Uh, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, please stay tuned to the individual videos on each console where I get a little, you know, I talk more about them and uh, my experiences with them. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.